Okay, let's talk about the MOGEA, or more commonly known as the Missouri General Education Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are a teacher in the great state of Missouri, or you're going to be a teacher in uh, Missouri, and you um, obviously have to take this uh, assessment, which is a basic skills uh, assessment. It's going to uh, be testing you in uh, reading, writing, um, and math, etc. So a lot of states have these different type of um, general knowledge tests. In Missouri, this the, the one that you're going to have to deal with is the MOGEA. So um, with that being said, we're going to focus in on a math problem here that um, you should be able to handle if you expect to do well in the math section, the math uh, portion of the Missouri General Education Assessment. So before we get going, a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. Um, so my background is a middle and high school math teacher and I've been in education for many, many years. Uh, but I've built out my program, Tablet Class Math, over uh, more than a decade and really have some fantastic online math programs. I actually have a specific uh, math uh, prep course for the Missouri General Education Assessment for the mathematics section of it. If you're interested in that, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out. But with that being said, let's go ahead and see if you can handle this problem. Okay, so I have something here. I'm not going to, of course, I'm going to solve it and we're going to explain it. But I don't want to give you too many clues uh, yet because I want, to, I want to give you an opportunity to figure it out. So looking at this, I'd like you to solve for x. Okay, so solve for x. What value or values of x make this true. Okay, so if I was to say, what are we looking at and what does it mean to solve for x? Okay, so with that being said, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and think about it. And of course, I'm going to go through it. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to think about it. Now, if you answered the question and said, well, uh, x is equal to 4, because what we're talking about is some number that's greater than 3, right? Okay, so we have some number that's greater than 3, but at the same time, it's less than 5. So if you think about on the number line, you have 3, let's kind of do it this way, uh, 4, and 5. Okay, so we have 3, 4, and 5. Now, is uh, 4 a number that is greater than 3? So we're, we're talking about inequalities here, right? So we have to satisfy two conditions in this particular inequality. This is what we call a compound inequality. But there's a lot to cover in the subject of, or the topic of inequalities. But let's just, you know, uh, continue on with this problem here. So I'll, I'll be kind of explaining some things, but I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson on inequalities because there's, you know, there's just too much to cover in one video. Okay, but we're looking at satisfying two conditions, right? We need the number that is greater than three, but at the same time less than five. So if you look on our number line here, uh, if we see, you know, we say, okay, what number is greater than three? Well, four is greater than three, and four is also less than five. So if you said x is equal to four, well, you would be partially correct. Okay, partially correct. And you say, what are you talking about partially correct? Well, actually, all these numbers in here fit the bill, right? It would be a solution. So 3.1 or 3.6, okay? Uh, 4.0001 or even 4.99999 all fit the bill. So let me ask you, you're saying, okay, yeah, I kind of get your, your point. All these numbers are also solutions. So really, all the numbers on the number line between that are greater than three but at the same time less than five would be a solution to this inequality. Okay, so how many numbers is uh, is that, right? So how many numbers are we talking about here? No, all the numbers that are greater than three but at the same time less than five. Well, if we try to count all these up, you would need several lifetimes because the amount of numbers is infinite. Okay, there's an infinite amount of numbers that, now of course they're super, super small and we could just kind of keep going. I mean, the difference between, well, let's see here, 3.00000001 and 3.00000000002, you can, you can obviously see that there's a ton, if not an infinite, and specifically an infinite amount of numbers between three and five. Okay, so one of the main concepts 
that are distinguish inequalities from equations is that inequalities have an infinite amount of solutions. So how do we represent uh, an infinite amount of numbers? Well, we can't do it by writing that down all the numbers. Obviously, it's an impossible task. So the way we would do this, let me go ahead and write it down here. Three, okay. All right, so we have x is greater than three at the same time less than five, okay? So one of the most common ways that we would do this is by using a number line, okay? Something like this, All right? So if I gave you this, whoops, hold on here. This uh, number line, okay, represents this inequality and it basically says all the numbers that are greater than three and less than five. So this is a kind of a graphical representation of this inequality here, okay? And then there's other ways we can write this using set notation. That would look like this, three comma five. Again, um, a lot of different ways we can express the all the numbers, the infinite amount of numbers that are greater than three and less than five. But really, the main idea here is to have you realize that when we're talking about inequalities, there's always an infinite amount of solutions. So for example, if I gave you x is greater than equal to four, well, you're saying, okay, well, how many numbers make this inequality true? Well, an infinite amount, right? All the numbers that are greater than or equal to four. So that's four, five, six, but also the numbers like 4.000001 is a solution. So a big, big concept, again, with inequalities versus equations, most equations have finite not all, but most have finite uh, number of solutions. So for example, if I give you three X to the fourth minus one equals 12, well, this particular um, equation has four solutions, okay? So this is what we call a polynomial equation, a fourth de uh, degree polynomial equation. I'm going off on some tangents here, but I just want to, again, distinguish that this is an equation, and we know it's an equation because it has an equal symbol versus an inequality. Okay, so this is a fundamental concept in mathematics. Okay, so equations, most equations will have like a finite amount of solutions, but inequalities will always have an infinite amount of solutions. Okay, so a little quick kind of review of main concepts about inequalities, but again, if you, um, you know, couldn't figure this out, or if you kind of gave me a few numbers in between, then hey, you know, give yourself credit for at least uh, thinking about this and recognizing that we are talking about inequalities, and, uh, and we're talking like greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, etc. All right, so I can turn this video into a complete uh, wonderful lesson about inequalities, but it would take us too much time, and that's not the point. The main idea here is to just give you a quick pop quiz so you can kind of assess where you stand in your math skills for the Missouri General Education Assessment. You're going to need to know a decent amount of high school level math, algebra, geometry, and more like basic fundamental math. And those are all the things I cover in my course. But, um, you know, as one teacher to another, and I've had to take uh, certification exams as well, they're, you know, don't underestimate them. Okay, so the thing about uh, my best advice, and I'm sure you already know this, is, you know, study hard, really hard for, for the, the assessment because um, a lot of people don't pass these assessments. Okay, it's not uncommon for a lot of teachers to have to retake them two, three times. And if that's you, uh, because you're maybe struggling with math, you know, hopefully, you know, my videos and my course can help you out. But with that being said, let's go and wrap up this video. Um, I've been on YouTube for like 12 plus years. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of math videos. It's something I really enjoyed uh, to do. So um, hopefully you consider subscribing, but I got a lot of material on my YouTube channel if you like my teaching style that can help you out. Again, I'm gonna leave a link to my uh, prep course um, uh, for the uh, MOGEA in the description of this video. So you can check that out if you like. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, Definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, is this your first time taking this assessment? Um, how long you've been studying for it? Um, you know, maybe tell me a little bit about your uh, teaching background, um, etc. Any feedback is good feedback. But with that being said, I just want to wish you all the best in your teaching career. Um, only truly 
the people that only understand what a teacher does or goes through to become a teacher are fellow teachers. Um, and it's a challenging career, right? Uh, and I've had a lot of careers in my life, including one being a U.S. Marine and a lot of other things. And I can tell you, teaching's right up there. Like it's one of those things that can be is very humbling, and you got to really work at it. But you know, with the challenges and and you know the tough stuff comes also you know uh, some amazing uh, rewards um, as well and only teachers understand those so I wish you all the best in your education career hope this video helped you out thank you for your time and have a great day